So if working digital is new to your studio practice, I do want to say it is very time consuming and it is going to take a lot of effort, a lot of patience. So, um, but if this is something you see yourself working in, if you do not 3D print and you want to 3D print, if you want to work with the laser machines, if you want to work with the, um, any of the other digital processes, um, learning a digital workflow is essential. Um, uh, so I want to introduce a, a digital workflow, how to move from, let's say, a paper piece, which is this piece right here. Um, you can recreate the object in a digital workspace. So here to my left is an image of this paper fold um, remade in SketchUp into separate little polygon pieces. And then from that, from that software, I was able to save each each polygon as its own file, 3D print it, piece it together, color it, so that it made a sculpture that is a little bit closer to what I was imagining um, uh, my work could be if it was to move from 2D painting into 3D. Uh, the great thing about working in a digital workflow is that once you have your file, once you have your object made, you can make it many times over because it is re reproducible. So for example, uh, this is one iteration. This is my very first 3D printed object. You can see it comes in all the different pieces, happen to be assembled together. Um, I am very interested in, in, in 3D printing another one. So I've already 3D printed all of my pieces again, dremel it down, sand them so they're nice plastic pieces. Um, in my next project, which I will keep you all informed about, is um, painting each piece except for maybe one polygon. So can I paint this whole thing in a, let's say the black is black, except for this polygon, and would that polygon float and would everything else be black? I'm curious to know. Uh, the good thing about having it as a digital file is I've already done the work on the front end. It all exists there. All I have to do is print it. If I want to scale this up into wood, Another good thing about my digital file, about something like SketchUp, and there might be other programs out there. Um, I, can, I can use SketchUp to measure the size, to scale it up to the size I want to cut it, and measure the size and the angle of every single piece. And from there, I can cut each piece of wood. I don't have to imagine what those measurements are. It's there for me in the file, um, in the digital workspace. I'm able to take those measurements, take it straight to the wood shop, and scale it up. And that way it's saving me a little bit of time. Uh, it's saving me a lot of money, a lot of mistakes. More mis mistakes will happen. Um, but since it, it, it takes me from something with everything there for me, and then I can just keep scaling, keep scaling, keep scaling, and keep seeing what the possibilities are um, until I bore of it. Uh, so um, everything in this video, by the way, is if you see a pop-up screen, it is interactive. So this right here is SketchUp that I'm showing you. You can click on this, you should be able to interact with this. Um, SketchUp is free for 30 days. Any SketchUp after 2018 is free for 30 days. I don't know if you can get anything uh, before uh, SketchUp 2018, but um, this is a great tool. Go ahead, download it, check it out. If you have your student email address, sign up for it. If this is a workspace you wanna work in, I will say start simple. Um, if you're going to be moving to a digital workspace and you're not used to it, a good thing to do is to find some online tutorials. Ping me, let me know. I'm here to help. Um, I'll do everything I can to help you with your process. Um, where most of you are, I think I'd be okay to kind of show you the necessary steps if you wanted to move your work into digital, into 3D modeling with something like SketchUp, Blender, I don't know. Uh, you'd really have to find something else. Um, but a really, really good resource right now is the Louisville Public Library. So the library does have a, I'm just gonna scale this up for us to interact with. The library does have right now, um, uh, they've set up their website, they've set it up so that you can, if you do not have a library membership, you can apply for a membership online. Um, and so if you are a Spalding student, I checked into it. You do get a, uh, a library membership, I think, for three years. And what I like about the library is 
Let's see if we can find it. You have access to lynda.com. Let's see, that's going to take me to a library search. Um, no. Hmm. Okay, lynda.com. So this is the Louisville Free Public Library homepage. Let me just move some of my, my little windows out of the way here. To, um, to access lynda.com, just go to internet links. Let me fix this there in a minute. Okay, and, um, uh, nope, um, hmm. research tool services. Let's see what we can find what we're looking for here. Okay, go to services and lynda.com. All right, so any program that you're wanting to learn, whether it be maybe the something from the Adobe Creative Suite, which you all have access to right now as well. Um, if you are looking to learn maybe some SketchUp tools, you have free access to lynda.com through the library. And I can't stress enough how important this is. We're not gonna get in because um, I'm not gonna put my library card in. However, um, I just want you all to know that please take advantage of that. Again, if you don't have a library card at this time, um, you can simply uh, apply online and, um, and go ahead and get yourself a membership and start seeing what digital workflows or what workflows you can get from lynda.com. And real quick, I just want to um, show you the link to Shapeways. So if you are wanting to 3D print something, you don't have access to our 3D printer right now, but you've You've made yourself a design, you want to see what you could do. Um, you can send your design, upload your 3D model into Shapeways um, when you export it from something, one of your 3D modeling programs. And you have the chance here to have it printed and sent to you um, anywhere. You can have your models printed in plastic, in glass, in gold. I think there is a lot of options. I would, of course, recommend going the cheaper option until you know what you need and then when you have the money, the resources, and you're sure of what, what materials you want to print it in, you could then um, go for the big money, go for the gold, as they say. So again, just to wrap it all up, take this time to think about where you want your work to go. What is your big idea? Go online, buy those simple materials, find the small studies. Get us to see where you're going with that big idea. Do something on a scale that's slightly manageable in size, but then the more exciting it is on this size, the more you can sell that idea that it's going to be even better when someone lets you get bigger. All right, have fun. Can't wait to see what you guys make.